Okay, so the principle of heat exchange. I want to put it into a drawing first. Here's the idea. If I take a cube of metal and I put it into a beaker, I know that at the end, maybe a beaker of water even, I know that at the end, the total thermal energy in the beaker with a piece of metal submerged in water is going to be equal to the EH over here. Let's call it EH for iron. Let's make it iron. Plus the EH for the water. EH here is going to be the sum of those guys. Does that make sense? Oh, EH for water. And you kind of said that once before. If we take two containers and we know the thermal energy in one and the thermal energy of the other, and we put them together, the total thermal energy of the system is going to be the sum of the two thermal energies. Okay? Now that's true. But let's say that this guy is 100 degrees Celsius, and this guy is, I don't know, uh, 40 degrees Celsius. What's going to happen to this iron as it goes into the water? Yeah? Cool down. Yeah, the water will cool down. What's going to happen to the water? Yeah. yeah. So I could say that the, the iron is going to lose energy, or loses energy. And you could say that the water gains energy. And I might even say that this is, well, energy lost by iron. And I could say that this is energy gained by water. What can you tell me about the energy gained by the iron and the energy lost by the iron? How do they relate to each other? They got to be equal. Like almost by definition, right? Actually, in fact, by definition, we could say that the Energy lost is going to be equal in magnitude to the energy gained. Energy lost by one substance is going to be equal in magnitude to the energy gained by the other. Okay. Now that makes a really big assumption. It assumes that no energy escapes out into the environment. Okay. So, yeah, a closed system is what we're essentially assuming here. And actually, a closed system is pretty hard to do. Like, to put a lid on there so tight that no thermal energy can get out. And then, make walls that are so good that no energy can get out. What are some strategies you could use to make sure that that doesn't happen? Yeah. Okay, so you could have a vacuum seal. What else could you do? Yeah. A thermos. Now, a thermos is a nice idea. Let's talk about some of... Oh, thermos. Thermos. What are some of the uh, construction strategies that thermoses use? Yeah. Vacuum seal. Okay, vacuum seal, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else? What else? Reflective, Reflective materials, yeah. Yeah, I think that would, uh, that would probably relate to the vacuum seal, but they also use your right. Rubber is a, a good example of what type of material as it relates to electricity. It's, it's an insulator. It's insulator. So, insulating materials. Okay. Now, the nice thing about a reflective material is what type of energy does it prevent the escape of? It starts with an R. Radiation. It takes care of the radiation. Because you probably know that thermal energy can be radiated as, as infrared energy beyond our, our uh, visible spectrum. What about the insulating material? How does that help us out? Yeah, kinetic, yeah. It actually prevents, prevents vibrational energy transfers. That's one of the best types of insulating material properties. Anybody heard about having like a vacuum in between the window panes in your house or at least a dead air space? 
Yeah. Yeah, those windows that you can't open in your house, usually they have dead air, or if you really wanted to make them excellent, a true vacuum. And that would mean that there's no particles in between the panes of glass, and therefore nothing in there to, to allow vibrations to pass from one glass sheet to another. And if you wanted to make a really good thermos, you'd essentially make yourself a container. And you might line that container with some sort of a shiny substance. Like, well, maybe glass or maybe silver, maybe even mercury, I don't know. Depends on how fancy you want to be. Some sh nice, smooth, shiny substance. And then you make yourself another container. Wow, you don't want to get it into your bloodstream. You don't want it to get into your nervous system. But let's say we leave a dead air space in between. That means that there's no particles of air in, or sorry, a vacuum space in between. So we evacuate all the air particles in between there. There would be no vibration that could pass from this surface to this surface. You want to keep it a vacuum? Then we could do our vacuum seal. Seal off the container so there really is no air, or as little as possible, air in between there. Then, you take your lid and you screw it on really tight. But even within your lid, maybe you leave your lid hollow and make the inside of your lid be a vacuum. Pump out all the air from the inside of your lid. And maybe even on the bottom surface of your screw top lid, maybe you make it shiny. Do you think then maybe you could keep all the energy in? No, not uh, even, even then, not perfectly. But you know, these are a lot of strategies people use. You know, you're not going to be 100% perfect, but the principle is a theoretical principle. In theory, assuming we don't lose any energy to the environment, the energy lost by one substance is going to be equal to the energy gained by the other substance. Yeah? Uh, what do you call that? I think it was like a closed something. Like closed oh, oh, you know what? In chemistry, you may use this. They call it a calorimeter. Oh, here? Yeah. Oh, in a, in a closed system. So we're just saying that there's no energy lost to the environment. And no new energy coming from the environment. That's actually important, too. So we might actually coat the outside of this thing in silver, too, so that no sunshine maybe heats it up. You know, maybe. 